Hello engineers, welcome back to Engineering Design Simplified. If you want to learn more about how to analyze mechanisms using analytical method, please subscribe to my channel and press that bell button so that you will be notified when I upload a new video. In today's video, I am going to discuss offset slider crank mechanism, position, displacement, velocity and acceleration analysis using analytical method. Here is a typical offset slider crank mechanism and this link is crank and length is L2, angle between horizontal and crank is theta2. This link is coupler link and length is L3, angle between horizontal and coupler link is theta3. Uh, this is the slider and slider is at an offset of E from this horizontal from the center of the crank. Let us see in the coming slides how to derive equations uh, to find uh, slider displacement, velocity and acceleration using analytical method. So this is the rightmost position of the slider where crank and coupler are coming in line. So distance from this crank center to the center of the slider is L2 plus L3. Let us call this angle, angle between this line and this horizontal is theta1. And if this is L2 plus L3 and this is theta1, let us call this extreme position from crank center to extreme end of the slider is L2 plus L3 into cos theta 1 and this is as we seen in the previous slide this is offset and horizontal component of L2 is x1 horizontal component of L3 is x2 and when the crank rotates by an angle theta 2 then the slider moves from this position to this position let us call this is a slider displacement that is the x. Now from this right angle triangle, this side is L2 plus L3 and this side is E. This angle is theta1. So theta1 can be found as sin theta1 equal to E by L2 plus L3. So from this we can write theta1 equal to sin inverse E by L2 plus L3. Now let us write uh, displacement equation. So the horizontal component of L2 that is x1 equal to L2 cos theta2. Similarly, horizontal component of L3 that is x2 that is L2 cos theta3. So this length we know that L2 plus L3 into cos theta1 and slider displacement is x. So x can be written as x equal to L2 plus L3 into cos theta1 minus x1 minus x2 that is written here. So after substituting x1 and x2 values and simplification, we get x, x equal to that is slider displacement x equal to L2 into cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2 plus L3 into cos theta 1 minus cos theta 3. So this is the equation to find slider displacement x. x equal to L2 into cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2 plus L3 into cos theta 1 minus cos theta 3. So to find velocity of the slider, we need to differentiate this equation with respect to time. So v equal to dx by dt. So that is equal to L2 into, since theta1 is constant, so differentiation of theta1 with respect to time is 0. And minus cos theta2, differentiation of minus cos theta2 is plus sin theta2 into omega2. Similarly, this is also L3 into 0 plus sin theta3 into omega3. So after simplification, we get velocity of the slider V equal to L2 omega2 sin theta2 plus L3 omega3 sin theta3. Similarly, to find acceleration of the slider, we need to differentiate this equation one more time. So we get acceleration A equal to dV by dt that equal to L2 omega 2 square cos theta 2 plus L2 alpha 2 sin theta 2 plus L3 omega 3 square cos theta 3 plus L3 alpha 3 sin theta 3. Here, omega 2 is the angular velocity of the crank and alpha 2 is the angular acceleration of the crank. Similarly, omega 3 is angular velocity of the coupler and alpha 3 is angular acceleration of the coupler. In the previous slide, we have seen two unknowns that is omega 3 and alpha 3. Now in this slide, let us see how to find them. So let us see vertical component here, y. y can be written as L2 sin theta 2 that is also equal to E plus L3 sin minus theta 3. Here, counterclockwise direction angle is taken as positive and uh, clockwise direction of angle is taken as negative. So that's why theta 3 is minus theta 3. So after rearranging this, we get L2 sin theta 2 equal to E minus L3 sin theta 3. So from this theta 3 can be written as theta 3 equal to sin inverse E minus L2 sin theta 2 by 
L3. Using this equation, we can find theta 3 for any given value of theta 2. Similarly, to find omega, omega 3, so let us differentiate this equation L2 sin theta 2 equal to E minus L3 sin theta 3 with respect to time. So we get uh, L2 omega 2 cos theta 2 equal to 0. That is, the E is constant. So differentiation of E with respect to time is 0. So that is equal to 0 minus L3 omega 3 cos theta 3. From this equation, we can write omega 3 equal to minus L2 omega 2 cos theta 2 by L3 cos theta 3. To find alpha 3, that is angular acceleration of coupler, we need to differentiate the previous equation with respect to time again. So we get uh, minus L2 omega 2 square sin theta 2 plus L2 alpha 2 cos theta 2 equal to L3 omega 3 square sin theta 3 minus L3 alpha 3 cos theta 3. After rearranging this equation, we get angular acceleration of coupler alpha 3 equal to L3 omega 3 square sin theta 3 plus L2 omega 2 square sin theta 2 minus L2 alpha 2 cos theta 2 by L3 cos theta 3. After having derived all the necessary equations, now let us solve a problem. In this problem, we have taken L2 crank length 480 mm, L3 coupler length 1600 mm, omega 2 that is angular velocity of uh, crank is 20 radians per second and E offset is 100 mm and alpha 2 angular acceleration of crank is taken as 0. So from this uh, geometry, uh, we can find theta 1 is 2.76 degrees. Now on this, uh, uh, in this column, theta 2 is taken from 0 to 360 degrees at an interval of 15 degrees. And in this column, theta 3 is calculated. And in this column, slider displacement is calculated. So when theta 2 is 0 degrees, slider displacement is 0.72 millimeter as theta 2 increases. Uh, at 180 degrees, it becomes maximum that is 960.72 millimeters. That is when the slider goes to the leftmost position. After 180 degrees rotation, again slider comes back to its rightmost position. So that is shown here. At 360, again it is coming back to 0.72 millimeter. Similarly, in this column, omega 3 is calculated. In this column, velocity of the slider is calculated. So here we have taken angular velocity of crank is uh, counterclockwise that is positive we have taken so when the slider moves from rightmost position to left leftmost position we take velocity of the slider as positive and when slider moves from its leftmost position to rightmost position velocity of the slider is taken as negative that is we can see here after 180 degrees all the values are negative so similarly in this column we have calculated alpha 3 and in this column a uh, acceleration of the slider is calculated. Now let us see graphs. In this graph, we have plotted theta 2 versus theta 3. So this is the variation of theta 3. Along horizontal, we have taken theta 2 along vertical theta 3. Similarly, in this graph, we have taken along horizontal theta 2 along vertical omega 3. So this is the variation of omega 3 with respect to theta 2. In this graph, we have plotted theta 2 versus alpha 3, theta 2 along horizontal and alpha 3 along vertical. So this is the variation of uh, alpha 3 with respect to theta 2. In this graph, we have plotted theta 2 versus slider displacement, theta 2 along horizontal and slider displacement along vertical. So this is the variation of slider displacement with respect to theta 2. And in this graph, we have plotted theta 2 versus slider velocity. So along horizontal, again, uh, theta 2 along vertical uh, Vs that is slider displacement. So this is the variation of slider displacement with respect to theta 2. In this graph, we have plotted theta 2 versus acceleration of the slider. So along horizontal again theta 2 along vertical acceleration of the slider. So acceleration of the slider is varying like this with respect to theta 2. That's all for today's video. If you like this content, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.